many of my colleagues in many Hong Kong style Chinese restaurants here also in Hong Kong, they love to experiment with fruits in their dishes. They use fruit to bring the unexpected sweetness and color to fusion cuisine. That combined the best of East and West. Let me start with a very light citrus salad with raspberry vinaigrette. This is very easy to do. Here, the first thing I want to show you is how easy it is to do some of these wedges of segment of orange and grapefruit. All we have to do is go like that, cut it up, use this knife, set this aside, and then I use my knife, a small paring knife, very small paring knife. I've been using this paring knife when I was 16 years old. That is about 74 years ago. <laughs> you see how I do it? I cut this up, cut this up, cut this up, cut this up, and then we set this aside. And then, look at how easy it is, okay? I cut this in between this white part, I cut like that, and I cut like that, and I move one out. See how easy. And I go another one, okay? And I go another one, another one coming out. You continue to do it until you finish everything. Now, when are you going to quit? I have no idea. <laughs> and this is all I need because why you are still doing something else at home? I already have done quite a few of these to get ready because we have at least 500 guests in our studio. Now, when this all ready, we have grapefruit and orange. I'm going to show you how we're going to build this thing. Look at this. I have a little plate, <laughs> wonderful plate. And then I'm going to have a tiny bit of these mixed green, wonderful, fresh mixed green you can buy in supermarkets or you can grow in your garden, build it up like that. And then I have lined this up, one little Asian pear, one piece of grapefruit and one piece of orange. And then one piece of this, one piece of this, and one piece of this. You can do anything you want. Be creative. Nobody's going to bother you, okay? And then when this is done, we can do a few more of this Asian pear on the other side, okay? And then when this is ready, we set it aside and we are going to quickly, we, in fact, you can build this up. You can build up, put a tiny bit of water chestnut, fresh water chestnut, a couple pieces of this purple onion, okay? And some candy ginger. Oh, this is what makes it unique. And some roasted walnut as some nutrition and crunch to it. Throw it in, beautiful, okay? And then in the meantime, you know what else you can do? Make the dressing. Here, I have some sesame seed oil, okay? And some salad oil, walnut oil, okay? Very, very light. And vinaigrette, do it very slowly. Put the raspberry, raspberry vinaigrette right here and make sure you stir it constantly. If you want, you can also make Add a touch of sweetness by using a tiny bit of honey. I use honey or I use brown sugar. Okay. Mix. 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 Very slowly. Get a nice homogenized mixture. And then when you're ready, very simple. All you have to do is put this dressing, drizzle in, and you have Look at this. You have a beautiful, delicious salad. You know, when you go to a Chinese restaurant, one of the most popular dish besides egg roll and wonton and fried rice is lemon chicken. Lemon chicken is perhaps one of the most popular dish in the menu in most Chinese restaurants in this country. I'm going to show you how to do a chicken dish that is three times as good, but not deep fried. And it's made with lemon, a lime, and orange. It's wonderful to do. Here, I have some chicken. Before I cut the chicken, I want to make sure my knife is sharp enough, okay? 
keep it sharp. And then make sure, do it like this and cut this up because I have to marinate my chicken. If you want, you can butterfly this chicken. And then if you want, you can even use the same knife to tenderize. You see how sharp this knife is, okay? Sharp knife, it's a safe knife. And if you don't have time, you just do it like this. Stack them all up together. You see how, far you, how fast you can do it. You see how I move my knife? You cut it downward forward, push it here. Cut it and you push it here. You cut it and you push it here. And I've been advocating this technique for years because this is what makes it nice and clean and easy to do. And then after this is done, you are going to transfer it from here to there. And I want to show you at all time, clean this up. Everybody look. Transfer from here to here. Done. Okay? <laughs> Very easy. After that, you're gonna marinate this. Now, if you want to do it very graciously, you do it like that. <laughs> Either way. Now, when this is nice and ready, we're gonna marinate this. We're gonna marinate it with some rice wine, okay? Tiny bit of soy sauce, not much, just a touch. And then stir. And then put a teeny tiny bit of white pepper. Cornstarch help to seal in the juice, give that nice shiny glaze, and also give that nice smooth velvety texture. Stir around, stir this, stir this. And set it aside and marinate it for about half an hour to two hours as I said, Always remember to clean up your cutting board if you have time, okay? Now, we are ready to cook this, okay? <laughs> Make sure the wok is hot. Now, using a non-stick wok, so this way it's easy to prepare food. You can use minimum amount of oil. When the wok is ready, we turn it high. And we'll put a tiny bit of oil, very little tiny bit of oil, okay? Move these around. And then put a tiny bit of ginger, minced ginger. Wow, look at this, exciting. And then put the chicken right here. And I want to show you, this is truly amazing. Stir, you can use a spatula to stir it. You see, in good works you're able to toss your food. And put a tiny, tiny bit of Orange peel, lime peel, lemon peel to give more flavor. And if you are really into something exciting, use a tiny bit of extra wine, okay? Tiny bit of extra wine, look at that. Wow, look at this. Exciting. This is still here. Then make a sauce with approximately two tablespoons of orange juice, two tablespoons of lime juice, and two tablespoons of lemon juice. Very unique flavor. And then a tiny bit of brown sugar, okay? And if you want to make even more sauce, put a tiny bit of Homemade soup stock right here. Make sure you catch it, okay? And then stir this. Always stir your cornstarch solution. Use one portion of cornstarch, about two to three portions. Look at, look at this, okay? Look at the difference. You stir, you put it in. As soon as it thickens, you remove it. Oh, perfect. See how fast? And then, you know what? You're gonna garnish it. You're gonna do all kinds of things with it. When it's done, I put this chicken right here. This is so amazing. Serve over rice. Or you can serve it as a main course. This is like a one dish meal too. And I will garnish it with this extra lemon, lime, and 
orange zest. It's a beautiful seafood fish. <laughs> Fresh fruit seltzers are the hardest new wave to wake up the flavors of light entrees like chicken and fish. I'm gonna show you one of the best, a spicy papaya seltzer. I'm gonna serve these seltzer with my grilled mahi mahi. Now, the salad I have tried, and I'm telling you, it is great. The first thing I'm gonna do is get ready my fish, mahi mahi, okay? You can use any fish. This mahi mahi is beautiful, and it's wonderful. It's very popular in most restaurants from Hawaii. I'm gonna put this, sprinkle a tiny, tiny bit of salt and pepper to marinate this. Tiny bit of salt and pepper, okay? This way, turn around. This way is nice and you don't want to over season this because you want to retain the wonderful flavor. When this is all ready, we are gonna put this right here and grill it in this dome-shaped stove top grill right here, non-stick, so you don't even have to use oil. Can you hear the sizzling sound? That means it is hot. And not only that, underneath there, you can put some water so nothing get burned, nothing get stuck. You can grill a whole bunch. You can cook enough for about six people, six pieces, put it right here. In the meantime, while I'm doing all this grilling, this mahi mahi, I'm gonna show you how to make a wonderful spicy papaya salsa. Here, I have all of the ingredients right here. Look at that, okay? This ingredient I have is I have some plum sauce. Look at that, interesting, huh? Plum, Chinese style plum sauce. Okay, and I have some soy sauce, not much. Okay, otherwise it would be too dark. I have some chopped Asian pear, look at that, Asian pear. And I have some papaya, kiwi, red pepper, and also purple onion, all of these ingredients. I'm gonna put all of these in first. Cilantro, jalapeno, or serrano, or Thai chili. Depends on the intensity. For jalapeno, they're pretty hot. Sereno is harder. Thai, little Thai chili, they smoke your hair. <laughs> and also, I use a tiny bit of lemon juice or lime juice. Oh, look at that. This is gonna be unbelievable. If you want to adjust the flavor, you can add a touch of sugar or honey, okay? And I'm gonna chop up a tiny, tiny bit of this, in the meantime, this has to be turned around. This is really nice, look at how beautiful this is. Look at that, isn't it nice? It doesn't take too long to cook at all. Cut it up, cut it up. Red bell pepper give a tiny bit of color to our dish. Chop this up. <laughs> Set it aside, put it here, give color and some extra sweetness to our dish. And then, purple onion. That's all I need. Put it right over here. Also, of course, some papaya. And I want to show you this is papaya. I'm going to use it basically for garnishing. I'm going to cut it like this. One, slice it up, slice it up like this into pieces like this. And I want to show you how interesting it is you, when you fan it out. You fan it out like that. Look at that. You can actually fan it out like this. So use it as a garnishing. So we're gonna put this over here. And if you want, you can even use a couple piece of kiwi. They call Sichuan wild gooseberry. Set it aside and put it right here. And then we are ready to do our wonderful fish with salsa. Here I have some of these. In fact, I, do, I even take the time to garnish this to make it look beautiful. Look at that Hawaii stuff. I love Hawaii, okay? <laughs> Put a tiny bit of these here. Now, garnishing is something that you can do whatever you want. Nobody's gonna say, hey, you have to do this, you have to do that. When this is done, put this right over here. This is how beautiful this is. 
When it's done, you put it right over here, and then you serve with a beautiful salsa sauce. Look at that. We scoop this in, mix this up, and put the salsa right over here and right over there. And voila, you have beautiful, beautiful. Food plays a very important part in the east-west cuisine of Hong Kong. Let's take a look at how two of the most inventive chefs in the Far East, Obudan Fiani and Li Chang Yun, work miracles with the tropical fruits of Asia. These delicate dough figurines are a specialty of Chef Long Chi Young of the Pan Pacific Hotel in Singapore. Each of the eight musical angels are depicted playing an ancient Chinese instrument, the Xian, Kong Ho, Gu Jing, Bells, Dizzy, Gu Xian, Clapper, and the Pippa. Then the pastry chef creates chocolate pedophores and decorates them with miniatures of each instrument. Here at the Conrad Hotel in Hong Kong, Chef Obanan Fiani is a specialist in East-West desserts. Look at this warm ginger creme beret decorated with a caramelized sugar champagne. Or what about this layered fresh papaya strudel? Here is a fabulous looking chocolate filigree cup garnished with fruit purees. Chef Fiani has created a masterpiece with this filo and fruit sandwich served with a sprinkling of powdered sugar. Do you believe these? An edible pipe organ made out of sticks of meringue and chocolate and served with three scoops of passion fruit mousse. And finally, the chef favorite, nutmeg tiramisu, served in rose sheets of chocolate and garnished with a crunchy coconut topping. Now, that is what I call a fruitful combination of cultures. Now, let me show you another East-West fruit dessert of my own. A warm strudel filled with Asian pears and freshly cheese. Marvelous dish. Everybody know that when you work with the filo dough, you gotta cover up. Don't open it until you're ready to go. So we cover this filo dough like this, okay? And we'll put this wet towel here and I want to show you how easy it is. Handle with extra care and attention. Oh, gentle, loving care. And then, before it dries up, use a tiny bit of melt butter. Use a nice, fresh, new brush. Brush it over here. And it's only uh, three and a half calories. And then, of course, sometimes you have to indulge on wonderful things. And then I have some roasted coconut, shredded coconut. I sprinkle this all over here, okay? Sprinkle it all over. This is what gives this unique strudel the uniqueness because it gives that coconut flavor as well as the texture. And then in the meantime, I'm gonna mix all of these ingredients. I have lychee, fresh lychee, already seeded, okay? Some chopped roast walnut, give extra crunch. Raisin, golden raisin, soaked in plum wine. Candy ginger. And a tiny bit of, of course, without Asian pear. It's not Asian pear strudel. The same thing like our papaya salsa. You gotta have a lot of papaya. Otherwise, <laughs> it's gonna be a problem. <laughs> And then, of course, a tiny, tiny bit of lemon zest and a tiny bit of sugar and a tiny bit of lime juice or lemon juice. Ah, this is what makes it unique, five spice powder. 
Oh, nice and sweet, like a licorice and cinnamon flavor. Tiny bit of plum wine and mix them all up, okay? Now you can either use this or you can use this to make it up, mix it up. And then when this is making up, you notice that ah, this year I've been using a lot of, of the cooking technique with my chopstick, okay? This is how you do it. You put it around here, put it around here. Do not have to, depends on how big the strudel you want. You know, I go to a German restaurant. I always love strudel. It's a wonderful German dessert. Put it over here. And then you roll it up, hold on the whole thing and roll it up. Move this, roll it up, the whole thing roll it up. And then make sure you close this, okay? You close this, close this and roll it up and continue to roll it up tight, tight and tight. Practice, perfect, okay? And then you put this right over here, handle with care, okay? And we are gonna take it to the oven and we're gonna bake it until the golden brown. Oh, before you forget, you should also make sure to make it even look more interesting. Ah, I always remember things. If you forget, all you have to do is do it all over again. <laughs> and then sprinkle a tiny bit of, oh, extra shredded coconut. Ah, this is gonna be making it very, very unique. When it's done, let's clean up. We'll take it over here, and we're gonna bake this until the golden brown. I am a generous guy. I always cook more than necessary and always cook more than just for myself. And I show you how easy it is to serve these. You use a knife or serrated knife. When it's done, you cut this an angle like this. Oh, can you hear the sizzling crush, crunchy sound? Oh, this is so unbelievable. I am gonna have not just one piece, I am gonna have two pieces myself. And then when this is done, we'll put this right over here and this right over here. And then you know what? To make it even more interesting, we're gonna serve with a touch of powder sugar. Look at that. Now, try adding wonderful and more fresh fruit to your diet. It's good for you. I think you will be delighted with all this fruit of your labor. Till next time, may all your endeavors be fruitful. And remember, if Yen can cook, so can you. Jia Jian.